everyone, it's James Fit RV, and uh, Steph is out of town this weekend, and I'm bored, so duh. Um, today we're going to be adding warp drive to no. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to do this uh, long-awaited galley remodel project. Now, without a camera person, I'm kind of wondering how I'm going to do this. I think what's probably going to happen is I'm going to time lapse it maybe there, and I'll just jump in at random points to kind of update you on the progress. So what I'm going to do now is lay out sort of where we're going. So the first thing, obviously, I've got it here. We're going to be installing an induction cooktop. Now, why install an induction cooktop? Few reasons. One, this runs on electricity, you know, battery power or an inverter, which I've got plenty of. So that's actually a cheaper resource for me than propane. But more than that, I've grown to dislike the propane cooktops for a number of reasons. One, it's almost impossible to clean down in here. I mean, they get a little bit, what is this, cheese? Maybe. Anyway, um, very difficult to clean. Stuff gets in there, so that bothers. Another thing that bothers is when you're cooking, like if this, imagine that you're cooking, you've got this much counter space. Now I know they have a extension that can pop over, but then you're blocking the door. So we're not a fan of that. With an induction cooktop, the surface is just flat. If you're not actually cooking, you can use the whole thing as a countertop even. So there's that. It's also safer. There's no open flame. Um, another thing is you won't have to open up the vent. You know, when you use the propane cooktop, you really should vent. And so I'm always opening the vent anytime I want to boil water for coffee or whatever. Won't have to do that. Propane, when you cook with it, it actually releases moisture into the air. That's nobody wants that in the winter, right? So there are a number of reasons why I want to get rid of the propane cooktop. So we're going to have an induction cooktop. That's one thing. And it's going to go, there are a number of reasons for this, but we're going to switch the sides and the induction cooktop is going to go kind of there. That moves the sink over to this side, and this is the sink I have selected. Ta-da! It's like this sexy stainless sink. But look, it's got this cutting board that sort of fits down into the sink. It's not quite flush. I may make another one. It's got that. It's got one of these funky things that'll sit on this ledge and fit down into the sink. And it's quite a bit deeper than the sink that comes with. It's also got pre-drilled holes on this stainless apron around the sink for the main faucet, which will go here, and then this drinking water faucet, which if I move it over to here, switch sides, that's gonna be back in the corner. It won't take up a whole lot of space. And that'll leave sort of the window unobstructed, whereas now we've got this in the way of the window. Now, being quite a bit deeper, I'm gonna to have to do some work with the plumbing because it's not gonna be able to pick up in the same drain location as the shallower sink because, you know, water doesn't run uphill. So, gonna to have to do something with that. But I'm not too worried because, maybe just this one. In this cabinet, I'm gonna be taking up some of the vertical space, but we are not making use of this space vertically in this cabinet right now. So, I'm not gonna be taking up any space that we're not already not using. I guess that's how you say it. The other thing that will allow me to do, so this cabinet space will shrink by a little bit. And then the other thing it will allow me to do is with this shallow thing here, I can then make a much bigger drawer. I can probably make a whole 17, 18 inch drawer to fit under the sink. So then we'll have two, it'll be at least that size. We'll have two larger drawers under the sink because I'll have the room for it. That's kind of the big overview. If I can, I'm going to take the propane line that runs for this and I'm going to take it just all the way outside and cap it off outside. I don't want it inside if I'm not going to be using it. Um, what else is going to, I'm going to have to CNC, uh -huh, paying off to buy that CNC router. The, uh, the countertop, I am going to go with just a laminate just because it's easy um, and I can CNC it. And, uh, and I should be able to put the same edge banding back on along with the uh, the under lighting here. I've got some material in the shop that will work well for the countertop and I've got the laminate ready to go. Um, that's about all I can think of right now. I'll pop in at a couple more places along the way and, uh, and give you updates, but uh, I guess it's just time to start tearing stuff out. So here we go.
Okay, sort of a checkpoint here. I've got most of everything out of here. There's still a little, I spent a lot of time staring at it and that's kind of how I do things. I'll, I never know what I'm gonna find. So when I do open things up, I just have to kind of sit there and try to figure out my next move. And I think I have. Um, so this is the propane line and I went outside under, underneath and uh, I found a manifold and I found where this goes. I found where this comes out. It comes out sort of underneath the fridge here. It goes in there and straight down. And so I'm gonna cut this in here so it's good and short and then yank it out from the outside and then seal that up at the manifold. So I'm gonna have to go buy a plug or some sort of cap or something when I see how the manifold is set up. Um, I don't think I'm going to have any problem switching sides. Uh, the drain pipe is all standard one and a half inch ABS, so that won't be an issue because um, I'll be able to buy whatever I need from any local home center. That's all fine. I can do some cleanup with uh, with some of the wiring and, and route them in less conspicuous ways, especially since I'm going to be putting drawers in here. I'm going to have to clean up like all this stuff so that it's not in the way of the drawers that are going to be somewhat larger. Um, other than that, it wasn't too bad in here, actually. Um, there is, I gotta decide what to do with this wire. This was for the, uh, the igniter on the, uh, on the propane cooktop. So it's 12 volt, it's live. I've got, I've got the positive capped off and then the, the ground is just here. And then there's another ground, which was just hanging out bare in there. I don't know what that's about, but anyway. Um, probably just cap those off and tie them off somewhere out of the way. Um... And uh, yeah, here's the lights. I don't know if that's going to still be sticky enough to stick underneath when I get there. I'll have to figure something out for mounting up the lights. Anyway, uh, I think next step is for me to go and uh, have a look at that propane manifold and try to remove it. So maybe I'll set the camera up outside. All right, cool. Is this going to work? Maybe. Yeah, cool. Um, well, if it works, it works. All right, so... The manifold is under here. Here's the bottom of the propane tank, so I'm right under that. And then I see a bunch of lines. There's one that goes straight up that goes to the Truma AquaGo. There's one that runs kind of over there and then in. That's for the uh, Vario heat. Here, obviously, is a line for the external propane connection. And then there's this one that runs right along to the front of the wheel well and then punches right up under the fridge. That's the one that goes to the, uh, or went, past tense, I guess, to the cooktop. And there's a <laughs> protective cover over the manifold. All right, I guess that's off. And where's the fourth one? Oh, it's way up at Impossible Land. Awesome! All right. I should probably remind everyone that if you are following in my footsteps, turn the propane off before you do any of this. Um, and I don't encourage anyone to try to follow in my footsteps, just to be clear. All right. And these hose clamps, I'm probably just going to leave because they're going to be too hard to remove and of not much benefit in removing them. Okay. All right, let's go get a wrench. Remember, what's the answer to the question, what size wrench? All of them. All right. All right, I brought wrenches 7 sixteenths through 12 sixteenths. Surely one of them will fit. No. Five eighths. No. 
Nine succeeds. Aha. Haha. No, it's not a flare fitting. It's just straight up pipe thread. Okay, cool. All right. There, so that's removed. Now I gotta go get a uh, matching one to, to fit in there. Okay, this is actually gonna be one of the more interesting things I've ever tried to get on video. I actually have rehearsed it. So hopefully this works out. I've got an entire roll of paper towels out here. So let me see. The, uh, the hole where, where the thing came out. Hopefully you can see that up in there. There's just a hole. That's where the, uh, what do you call it? That's where the propane hose that went to the cooktop came out. So my plan to do that is I've got this piece of ABS. It's a leftover from Mel's litter box. Um, I am going to just take this and I'm going to screw it up over it. And then I'm going to make sure I've sealed the snot out of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover the back of this with a lot of sealant. Blah. Then I'm going to try to snake under there, stick it up, and then screw it in. Now, I've actually, like I said, I've rehearsed this, and I've pre-drilled the holes. I've done everything I can to kind of make this work, but this is gooey, nasty stuff, so it's probably going to wind up on my face. I don't know what I'm going to do with the camera. You may stay there. You may get to come underneath. I don't know. Um, that needs to go under there. And then this, is this liquid enough to push through? Yes, it is. All right, here we go. Got a nice gloppy double ring of adhesive. It'll go around the opening. Because I can actually see wires up in that opening. Okay. All right, let's see, where can I put you? Uh, how about... There. Maybe you can see stuff there. I don't know. Maybe you can see that. Maybe it'll work. Maybe? I don't know. Well, we'll see. Okay. Stay, stay. All right. I don't think that's going anywhere. And I think I'm going to get out of here before it trips on me. You get a piece of cardboard under here. But I think that's going to, we're going to leave it like that. Let me get you out. If you're ever working with this stuff and you get it on your hands or anywhere you don't want it, mineral spirits, best thing in the world for removing it. Thanks for the tip, Mike. And water, this is just water, actually helps it cure. So I'm gonna get it a little moist, hoping it will cure up quicker and quit dripping on my tailpipe. Because putting mineral spirits on the tailpipe is not like something that feels right. <laughs> There. All right. Okay, so this was the, the propane thread thing that goes into the manifold. Took it to the store, got another part. So important keys for success, get the right part, which I did. Apply a thread sealant, because this is just a uh, threaded fitting, not a flare or anything. So apply an appropriate thread sealant for whatever your thing is in this case propane and this is fine for gas and for brass and then probably most importantly is when you're done check for leaks and that's what i'm about to do and here we go under now this is going to drip on my head joy all right <sighs> maybe i can do come on There. 
It's right here. And I'm looking. But I got nothing leaking here. I spilled stuff. And it stinks. Ugh. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, well that's all that's gonna happen outside for today. And what's gonna happen now is kind of a boring part that doesn't video well, so I'm just gonna do it and, and that's gonna be all you get for today. So I need to take that, that's the countertop down there, and get the measurements of it, and then I need to get the instructions for the sink and also for the induction cooktop and figure out what sort of cutouts they need. And basically, I've got to make a, a CAD model of the new countertop from, you know, this one and these bits. That's just me sitting at a computer and working with a measuring tape, not too terribly exciting. So we'll pass on videotaping that. Um, the big box over there, that's the uh, sheet of laminate that I've got for the, uh, for the new countertop. There's also, if you look over there, we've got some uh, three quarter inch, uh, what do you call it, Baltic birch. Um, the existing, the pre-existing countertop was actually just particle board, um, but I decided to go with the, with the Baltic birch. Um, I've got drawer slides as well. I'm replacing both sets of drawer slides. And the only thing they had in the 16 inches that I wanted was, uh, was self-closing, so we're gonna experiment. I didn't really want self-closing. We're gonna, the soft close thing, you know, the E where it pulls it in the last bit. I don't know how that's gonna work with the, with the slam latches, but we're gonna give it a go and see. If not, I'll get some other drawer slides later. And then, yeah, that's, uh, that's the end of it. So it's onto the computer for me and uh, we'll pick it up tomorrow. Well, it turns out I cannot finish up my, uh, my 3D model of the countertop until I know exactly how thick the counter is going to be. And since the countertop is going to be laminated, then uh, I kind of need to have it all laminated and finished up so that I know what the final thickness is. So what I'm going to do now, I've got the uh, Baltic birch here. These are all just scraps, but they're like potentially useful. So I'm kind of keeping them until I'm done with all the RV mod stuff. Anyway, um, take the Baltic birch. I'm going to cut off a piece big enough for the countertop and I'm going to laminate both sides of it. So that all kind of happens over here and on this table. So that's what you're going to see next. It may take me a little while. I think I'm going to time lapse it. So here we go.
Okay, well, after the miserable failure last time trying to laminate the countertop, I learned there are two secrets to actually getting this to work. First is don't try to videotape yourself while you're doing it. You don't need the pressure. And then second is get a helper. Steph's back. She's holding the camera. So welcome back, Steph. Okay. Um, but now the pressure's on because this is it. Other, if, I, if I screw this up, I got to wait for like another piece of laminate to get here and stuff. So here's what we're doing. We've got it laminated. I've got the countertop programmed in with the cutouts where I want it into the CNC. I've simulated it on the computer. I've even run a dry run of the router around here with the bit missing just so that I could make sure that I wasn't going to crash in anything. It should all be fine. All I have left to do is to uh, set the depth of the z-axis and then fire it up. And according to, the, according to the prediction in the simulation, it should take about nine minutes to cut this whole thing out. So we'll see if that works. So first, we'll set my uh, z-axis with this little guy. We'll touch off puck. Booyah, okay. Z-axis is set. You go uh, start up the dust collection and then we'll fire this bad boy up. And like I said, hopefully it works and I don't have to like make a new one because that would really seriously bum me out. All right, here we go. We have liftoff. You can follow along at home here. for the cooktop cut out. <laughs> well, all the freaking Louie, it worked. So, no issues, multiple dry runs, and I was successful. Now all I have to do is uh, bust free these little tabs that are kind of holding all these pieces down and we can start uh, working on putting things in and putting that out in the RV. Woo! All right, so the countertop is made. I cleaned up the, uh, the CNC piece right here. Here's the old and the new. Ta-da. Look at that. How about that? They fit in the same spot. Fantastic. Now, I want to be able to put the edge banding around this countertop so you're not looking at the edge of the plywood. So I've got the old edge banding that I removed from the previous countertop right here. And I've set up my router so that it makes, so this stuff works on just, you're going to have to come in to see this, but there's just a little groove that you put in the, in the piece and then there's this T that kind of slips into the groove and you kind of pound it in with a little hammer and then it just stays by friction. And so that's how it was mounted. And so I've made test cuts. I've set up the router and this is a cutoff from the, from the countertop. And that's exactly where I wanted it. It lines up with the top of the thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to clamp down the tabletop, except the trouble is, is that the slotting bit that I have is just a 16th of an inch. And this needs three thirty seconds of an inch in order to fit in the thing. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to make two passes. I'm going to have to make one pass with the T-slot bit and then lower it eight tenths of a millimeter and then make a second pass along the same path. And then that should be enough room to slip this in. That's how that worked. So let me get that set up and then we'll be good to go. Here we go.
Okay, well, um, it's probably time for another checkpoint. A lot's happened, and most of it is actually out in number one right now. So, thankfully, the temperature has cooled a bit, and it's more mild than it was in the hot of the summer. So, here's kind of where we are now. We have a counter. Um, the uh, the edge banding, or the T-molding, I guess it was into the uh, edge of the counter. I, since my counter was the exact same dimensions as the original Winnebago counter, that just hammered right in. That went okay. Then I put the countertop in, and then I went to drop here. I can kind of show you what this will look like eventually when I'm done. So sink. Ooh, sexy stainless sink. Gonna sit in like that. And let me get by it. I gotta get the uh, induction cooktop right here and this will drop sort of in like that and this cooktop was the root of much sorrow because the first time i went to drop the cooktop in this end went in and then this end went clank and stayed about like that the reason why is because there was an outlet box behind this holding this outlet and if I had seen that ahead of time, or if I had known, if I had mounted this just a centimeter further back, I would have saved myself like two days of futzing around with this outlet box. So, and then for some reason, a shallow outlet box like these, impossible to find now. Like you have to go to like six different stores around here to get one of these. It's like a dollar product, but it was very difficult to find. Anyway, found that and I put an outlet box that's smaller here so that the induction cooktop would drop in. I was trying to match where Winnebago had things and so that's why they're where they are. Anyway, then I realized though I had, I thought, ooh, I am so smart. And I had wired up an outlet when I did the, uh, the 20K project. I had wired an outlet for the induction cooktop and it even has its own breaker. And I thought I was so brilliant, but I forgot to put in a switch and so because we have a cat who can walk up here and paw the induction cooktop on anytime the inverter's on, which would mean anytime the air conditioning is running, we need a switch. So I have a switch. Well, I don't have a switch, actually. I've just got some wires here waiting for a switch that, again, very difficult to find because I wanted a black one. That's coming. So that's kind of done. So I then tidied up all the wiring up underneath there. I don't know if you can... Well, you probably can't tell because you didn't really see it before, but tidied up all the wiring it's all tucked away and wire clamped and whatever out of the way on this side there's going to be giant drawers going all the way back so these drawers will be 17 inches deep or so and they will run all the way back this side is going to be a little more limited because we're going to have the drain now drain stuff i've mentioned before that plumbing excuse me is my nemesis and so cut the plumbing and to rebuild it, I used a bunch of these. This is a Fernco plumbing fitting. Now these are stupid expensive. This thing is like $9 right here. So for building something new in mass, I would absolutely not use these. I'd use the 30 cent ABS fitting. But for a remodel in an RV, I really like these for a couple reasons. One, they're, they're almost idiot proof. Like you just tighten the clamp and it's gonna be fine and since plumbing is my nemesis idiot proof's a good thing two they're flexible a little bit so if i need to bend something to get it onto the tailpiece of the sink or whatever i can do that and then third i've even gone with a flexible trap that will be going in the sink this is great for an rv because if i forget and leave some water in here over the winter and forget to pour antifreeze down here and it freezes it's not going to burst this it'll, it'll stretch it but it's not going to burst it so next thing i'm going to do is mount up the sink silicone around the edge or whatever it's got these weird little clamps so i'll be tightening those up get the sink mounted the induction cooktop is going to be the absolute last thing i secure in place because it's probably going to be easier to work on these drawers if i can get to them from the top as well so that'll be last so I've got all these Fernco fittings in here. This is all ready for the sink. So what I'm about to do now is just uh, drop it in and lock it down. And then we'll do the, uh, the supply, the, the faucet. So that's where we are. And away we go. Let's see. I've started buying silicone just in these little tubes, by the way, because I got tired of throwing away three quarters of half hardened tubes of caulk. All right. Um,
covered in goo. Things I need to go under here. All right, well, many hours of fussing and swearing under the uh, under the counter later. We've got this we've gotten this far. So this is the drinking water faucet that's installed. That's that's okay. Everything's fine there. But then this is the main faucet that came out of the Echo in the first place, and it looks kind of okay from maybe that angle, but when you're right here, the front of the faucet is just a couple inches from the front of the sink. And so we're thinking that, you know, if we're washing dishes, that's going to be a lot of water splashing out of the sink. So it looks like I'm going to not be reusing this faucet, which means I got to go buy another faucet. Maybe one of those cool gooseneck things with the little sprayer, you know, or something like that. We have one at home here. Um, something like that. I don't know, but something that where the water is coming down, not kind of pointing right at the edge of the sink, but maybe more down towards the center. Anyway, that's it. It's getting late, though. I don't think I'm going to go sink shopping tonight, so we'll pick it up tomorrow. All right. All right, it's a new day, and today's project is to make the drawers that go in the, uh, in the galley. So this is fairly straightforward woodworking. I've got pre-finished plywood. I'm not doing anything crazy. I'm not dovetailing them or anything like that. I'm just going to kind of tack them together the way Winnebago's done here. And it, like I said, it's pretty simple woodworking. should take me about five seconds. And boom, five seconds, see? Anyway, so now we've got two drawers, which I've completed in here, and they're quite big, and I lined them with cork, and so there we go. Now, next thing is to mount the induction cooktop. Now, it comes with this foam gasket around the edge, but if you read the instructions, they say, if you're mounting it in an RV, to use butyl tape. And weirdly, I happen to have a roll of butyl tape in my drawers somewhere. So what we're going to do is we're going to go inside. We're going to take off this foam. We're going to clean that up and we're going to stick some butyl tape on there. Then we're just going to come in here and there's no mechanical fastening. You just drop it in and the stuff sticks, supposedly. So we'll see. If that doesn't work, then I can peel that off and we'll try silicone. Um, so yeah. That's next. But this is kind of what it's going to look like. The faucet's also here today. So we're going to try to get that mounted as well. So into the shop. This is butyl tape. Normally you'd use it for like sealing up something on a roof. But apparently, according to the true induction people, this is what they want you to use to install their induction cooktop. And weirdly, it's a good three-eighths of an inch in width. So that's what we're going to use. Let's see how it goes. And that is like 67 millimeters. So, I don't like the way this looks. That's the butyl tape, and it looks like crap. So, I'm going to remove it, remove the butyl tape, and we're going to install it with silicone, which will get much closer, because that's like, that's like a quarter inch tall now, and that's not what I'm after. 
So this is coming out somehow. Oh boy. Drop sink in opening. Oh God, I hope this fits. <laughs> Wouldn't it be terrible if this didn't fit? <laughs> it would also be typical. Okay, and presto, we're done. Kind of skip ahead a bit. So um, the butyl tape here for mounting the induction cooktop just did not work at all. I had to pop it, it was too thick. It was way up high. And so I had to take that off and then now it's mounted with silicone. I can still get it out if I need to. I'll just have to knife under there and get the silicone up. And then there was like, you know, hours and hours of cleaning up silicone goo around the edges of this thing. Um, the sink is in. Uh, and it works. So, yay for that. Um, cool attachments with this sink. I'll have to show you. There's this little thing in the bottom to keep things you put in the sink from sitting in the muck on the bottom of the sink. Um, it's got the coolest strainer basket I've ever seen in a sink. Cutting board. And then there's one more part um, here that's like uh, this kind of thing. So you could set things on the sink to dry. So, okay. And that will actually will go on there if you want. It just sits up a little high. Anyway, the sink is in. The drawers are done. So here are the drawers. I don't know if you can see. Woo, quite large drawers. That one was always sort of large. The top one is now amazingly large compared to what it was. It was a little skinny thing before. And so that's in there. Now, the self-closing drawer slides, they do kind of, you can see when I get them close, they, come on, they pull a little bit, but not strong enough to get them latched. So in that way, we're no worse off or better off than we were before. Now, where I was worried was under here. And I don't know if there's a good way to show this. I'll have to do it in B-roll. Um, and that this sink is quite a bit deeper than the sink that we had. And I was worried we were going to lose space. But everything I took out from under our sink is now back under the sink. So I guess we didn't lose that much space so there we go i'm calling this project a success it wasn't super easy though so i'm giving it like a seven out of ten on the uh difficulty scale oh the other thing the uh the induction cooktop we have a cat and if we were to stay in leave the cat in here with the air conditioning running we'd have to have the inverter on which means the induction cooktop would be on and it just goes off by touch and he actually in our last rv he could turn it on if he happened to climb up on the counter, which he knows he's not supposed to do, by the way. But if he climbed up on the counter and walked on it, it would turn it on. But now I have a switch. And now the induction cooktop is on, right? This is actually a 20 amp switch. You gotta, you gotta look for that special. And so 20 amp switch for the induction cooktop, even though that's only like 16, 17, 1800 watts, maybe 20 amp switch. So there we go. And then to shut it off, it's just like that. And now I doubt the cat would do that and that. He might do one or the other. I doubt he would do both at the same time. Anyway, calling the project a success. And I guess that's going to do it. We'll, uh, we'll see you later. Bye. Oh, he's like, uh-oh. What's going on, buddy? <laughs> I heard a tool get turned on. Plus, she's shoving a camera in my face. Well, that always makes him run away. <laughs>